One of the big problems we have in dealing with evil spirits, demons, satans, is that by their very nature, they are spirits. You don't feel them, you don't, uh, you don't see them, uh, you don't taste them. And, and so how do you know that they exist? What's so universal about the Boogeyman is that it ties into something so primordially innate in every single person, which is that we're all afraid of something. And it's always lurking in the shadows because that's where we can't see. For some reason, horror movies never scared me, which is probably why I went into the profession I did. But the boogeyman was terrifying for me. And even still to this day, I won't like let body parts fall over the side of the bed or anything, because I know there's nothing under my bed, but somewhere in my psyche, there's still something under there that's gonna grab my arm. People have always asked me, do you believe in demons? And I wanted to be a historian of demonology that didn't come to it trying to prove what he personally thought. And so I refused to answer that question. But my study has led me to believe without question that demons are real. The word boogie or bogey occurs for the first time in written form in the English language in the 1500s. In reality, it is probably much older. I absolutely love the Boogeyman because he is completely undefined. Even though that he exists in every culture throughout history, there's never been anything really consecutive about him. If you think of so many other monsters, right? Like if you think of a werewolf, if you say werewolf, I can picture a werewolf. If you say the Boogeyman, or, or any other of the, of the like international hundreds of names that this creature has. Everyone's image that pops into their head is completely different. In English and English-derived cultures, we have this idea of the boogeyman as someone who will come and snatch children away, sometimes even eat children. Uh, if we go down to Spain, we have el coco or el cucuy, uh, kind of shaggy, rough, brown, hairy creature, somewhat bear-like, who also snatches children. There are boogeyman-like figures that actually accompany Santa Claus. These figures are dark. Uh, Krampus, for example, has horns, just like the devil does. Uh, sometimes these figures carry whips with which they punish naughty children. One of the most terrifying ones, I think, is the Philippines. The Philippines boogeyman takes his own head off, and then he eats kids through a giant hole in his neck. If you think about movies, and especially horror movies, it's not to create a fear in the children, but to remind the adult of a fear that they have. And so what's really interesting about like an evolution of the boogeyman into something like Bagul in, in the sinister movies is that it's really sort of like the boogeyman's tables have been turned. Because now instead of parents using the boogeyman to terrify their children, it's taking the children and, and destroying the parents. It's sort of this idea that if you look deeper into the myth, maybe it's not this thing that comes after your kids, but it's because it's punishing them. Maybe it's punishing you. And that's, that's even scarier, I think. Hey guys, I just want to thank Sinister for including us in this video and make sure to check out Sinister 2 on August 21st in a theater near you. Make sure to subscribe to Cinefix for more awesome movie content. Like this video if you want to see more of something like this format. And in the comments, really important, I really want to know what your biggest fear is. What are you scared is hiding under your bed? I'm afraid.